Well, this morning I'm at Sandy Camp Reserve. It's seven o'clock. I'm meeting my mate here, Mike Presley, at around eight o'clock, but I thought I'd get here a bit early just to do a walk around. Because with my mate, like, I really don't want to have to do too much video work. So I just want to show you what the place was like. In my eyes, first time here, and already, well, I can see where the osprey nest is. I'll just pan around this side here a little bit on the right. I'll zoom out a little bit. Zoom in, sorry. Right in the middle there, in a big pole, there's an osprey nest right above that. Now I do put my drone up sometimes to show you what the place looks like from the air. But here, sorry, cannot do that. We're in a restricted zone because Brisbane Airport is very close by. And also, we've got major huge power lines right above us here. So there's no way I'm putting the drone up here. We've got another very overcast day today. Last night was saying like, oh, partly cloudy. This morning, mostly cloudy. And it is cool. Only about 12 degrees at the moment. Now the track does lead two ways. You can see the track goes to the right here. That takes you further into Sandy Camp. And then there's another track that goes to our left. I will just walk down here a little bit. I say, I say willy wagtails everywhere. But for me to try photograph a willy wagtail is so difficult. So maybe this morning I'll have better luck and get some willy wagtail photos. You can see they're everywhere. And if you like this video, like, give us a thumbs up. Really helps me out. Oh, so here it comes. We got swamp lands. Oh, I can see there's a bird hide up here to our left. Wow, this looks like such a nice place. Now, when I'm going to walk around with my mate, we've given ourselves about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to walk around this place. He's told me, like, you know, sometimes you can be here two, two and a half hours, depending on what you're after. I'll just pan here on the right. Look at that. There's there's water birds in here. We got more hens. I think we got more hen nesting on that side over there. Now there's another one here. Another pal. He says, if you don't have your camera now, I'm just going to be walking in front of you and tease you. Now on my last outing, I went to Sandstone Lake. It was similar weather to this. Overcast. On overcast days like this, it is much better to overexpose your image than underexpose it because if you're just having, let's say, zero exposure compensation and your image is dark and you go home, let's say, the Adobe Lightroom and you increase your exposure, increase the shadows a lot to get a correct exposure, well, you're going to induce a lot more noise. There'll be more grain. So you'll be working harder to get that noise out of your image. But overexpose your image out here, let's say by one, one and a half stops, which I had to do at Sandstone Lake. You go home, sure, the highlights are slightly blown. You can bring them down a little bit, but the bird, whatever you're photographing, is correctly exposed or very close to it. So you're going to see less noise, less grain in your image. So you have to make your mind up. Are you going to try to do it post-processing, which is the bad way of doing, or saying, okay, well, it's an overcast day. There's no chance of the sun coming out. I'm going to increase my exposure compensation by one, one and a half stops, and you're going to end up some great photos because we're not photographing landscapes. We're photographing the bird. So it doesn't matter to me if the background is overexposed, as long as the bird is correctly exposed. That's the way I do it. So if you follow my channel, you know I shoot with a Nikon D500 and the Nikon 200-500. I've done a video and I'll put the link up here now of all the settings, how I shoot with my camera gear. If you want to see all the settings, take a look at the video here because I don't talk about it in every video now because it just takes time with my video. So check out the link and let's keep walking. But on days like this, birds are less likely to move about. You might get lucky, but I found that especially songbirds and all that, they just seem to sort of move less around. So this is one of the little lookouts here. Wow, and there's just so many birds out here. We've got moorhens, we've got Pacific black ducks. What else is there? A lot of moorhens around. That's about it. Oh, we've got some, I think some ibises up in the tree over there. Oh, there's another little pond just beside us here. Bit overgrown. Oh, look at that. 
I know you guys can't see it. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Hopefully when I come back with my mate, right in front of us here, we've got some Pacific black ducks with some ducklings. Oh, so cool. Oh, and there's at least eight. And we've got an egret just down here. I just saw her stop down here. There she goes. Do you see it? There it goes. Look, we've got an intermediate egret here. Now, in southeast Queensland, around waterways, we normally have three egrets. The great egret, the intermediate egret, and the little egret. We sometimes see the cattle egret. The easiest way to distinguish between the intermediate egret and the little egret, but the little egret has got a black beak at all times. So that's the easiest way to identify a little egret. Now let's walk across the other path here and see what's over here. Now I know I say this in just about every video, for me, wildlife photography is more than just capturing that perfect shot. Oh yes, I am super happy when I take that great photo of you know, a nice fly catcher feeding its young, an osprey in flight, osprey catching a fish. I am super excited about that. Just being out here, being in nature, that is enough for me. It is just so rewarding and satisfying. Just walking around looking at the birds sometimes the birds are way up in the trees but you can still hear them you're still at one with nature that's what wildlife photography for me is i've always liked nature you can hear a lot of birds around that's what makes me tick that's what i like about wildlife and that's why i share videos of what the area looks like as well because you come here and you go like well oh i didn't know it looked like this i can't walk very well what's the area look like I met one of my subscribers and she gets around in a wheelchair and it's just so great to see people with mobility issues they still want to get out there so sharing a video showing you like yeah, okay well okay this path you can't go but on but there's another path here that you can go on there's a track that this guy was talking about so there's the asphalt that he was talking about oh this makes it much better he said this was very swampy so this is a brush turkey nest not being used at the moment but this is how they nest. They just drag up all the leaf litter, then make a hole in the middle here, put the eggs, and then bury it over. There you can see they've really cleaned this track up. The sun is trying to peek its head out through the clouds on my left here. Now, if you live in the Brisbane area, and there's a place that you'd like me to go to, leave it in the comments. Lark eats everywhere. Are we coming up to another lagoon on our left here? Oh, wow. I hope it's there when I come back. Right in front here, we've got a juvenile jacana right in front of us here. We got some Pacific black ducks. I haven't photographed a jacana for so long. I just couldn't bring my camera with me because I, I just wanted to walk around. It's just behind these bushes here, these reeds. There they go, they're flying out. Now if you're wondering why people call these jacanas the Jesus bird, is they look like they walk on water. Of course they don't, but it looks like that they walk on water. But their feet are so long and they're so light that they just walk on the water lily pads. No, I know, on a perfect day it's great to get out, but we all live busy lives and sometimes you just can't marry up the perfect sunny day to when you want to go out. If you work Monday to Fridays and Saturdays like this, what are you going to do? So I'm going to stay home or so like I'm just going to challenge myself and I'm going to go out in the weather like this. Challenge yourself. So we're at the end of the road here. This is the way back. We're just going to walk to the end here. And just walk back to the car. There's some darters. Yeah, I know it's a bit hard to see. There's a couple of nests there. I don't know if they're nesting there, but I can see a, a darter right on top. I think it's a darter. And a little pied kumut right at the top of the tree. Walk to the end here. A lot of brown honey eaters. Yes, yeah, another willy wag telling me, like, hey, you know, you don't have your camera with you. Oh, that would make such a great shot. A little willy wag tail. He's just perched up there saying, like, hey, look at me, Charles. You don't have your camera with you. Tough luck. I'm not going to be here when you come back. This is a nice industrial estate. 
I think I've seen about a dozen willy wagtails. So that's my challenge this morning. Get one great willy wagtail photo. So this is the end. Another little lagoon here. Not many birds here. A couple of Pacific black ducks. Okay. Well, that's the end. Now I will overlay a map to show you where I walked this morning. So you've got an idea of what these areas look like. And I'll put little arrows to show you like the direction that I walked. So I sort of follow in the video. Now we're just walking back towards the car. Another little lagoon on the side here. Some of these look very hard to get to. It looks like the cloud is trying to break through a little bit. So I'm walking back to the car now, well towards the car. So I'm on the track that took me to the right now. When we started walking we went left. Now something I do tell people is when you're out places like this, look how you walk around the area. I like walking with the sun on my back if I can. Sometimes you can't, but if you can, walk with the sun to your back, even on overcast day it's going to give you the best chance of getting some nice photos because the sun to back you're going to get less blown out highlights think about that when you're walking around Now on this day I had a great time with my friend at Sandy Camp Wetlands Reserve and we photographed quite a few different birds but I missed half of them at least that were out of focus or the exposure was wrong. I'm sharing this to show you that we're all humans and we're all prone to stuff up from time to time. When I shoot wildlife I shoot in AFC, autofocus continuous. On this morning I hadn't set my camera to AFC. I had left it set to AFS. This is a big problem for me because I use back button focusing. I normally just hold the button down as I'm moving around tracking a bird. And of course with AFSS, even though the button was pressed all the way in all the time, it only focused once. So when the bird was moving around, it wouldn't refocus. And it was really stressing me out on this morning. And I hadn't realized what was happening until I got home. And of course it was way too late and also during the morning I struggled with the light. My photos were always underexposed. I had to use sometimes up to 2.5 exposure compensation to get a correct exposure and it was really baffling me why I had to increase it so high. And when I got home I realized also my mistake there was that my metering was set to matrix. It was reading the whole frame not just the bird. I normally shoot in center point or spot. Had I done that, I wouldn't have struggled as much. I'm sharing this just to show you that we all make mistakes and we learn from our mistakes. So if you found value in this video, give it a big thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. It really helps me out. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.